vitamin D deficiency is common throughout the United States. Interestingly, it's unique in that it is the only vitamin meant to be obtained through sun exposure and not through food. Today, the doctor is in, and we're going to ask Larry, why is vitamin D considered the wonder vitamin? Heidi, you know, this is, um, I think, a real important vitamin. Through the years, we've gone through a million wonder vitamins, you know, from A to C, E, and a lot of those fail to really show any benefit. But the research on vitamin D is really compelling, and it seems like uh, it's really something that is going to change how we treat diabetes and maybe change heart disease, high blood pressure. And um, I think one of the nice things about it is that you can get it from the sun, mm -hmm. right? It's the only vitamin that's really made in your body, and it's made from sun exposure, changes some chemicals in your skin. However, as you get older, your ability to convert that to uh, active vitamin D goes down. So the elderly become deficient in vitamin D. Plus now we ride in cars, we use a sunblock and things like that. So our vitamin D levels overall have gone down. We're not absorbing it. We're not absorbing and we're not making it. You're converting it. The only foods that have it are like a salmon, mackerel, sardines, some types of mushrooms, liver, egg yolk. So you don't, there's not a lot of foods that have it. When vitamin D deficiency was first recognized in kids, it's called rickets. They, have, they get a bone disease, like brittle bones. So the FDA um, recommended that it be put in food, and the food is fortified milk. But the amount to prevent rickets in kids is totally different than the quantity that we need to prevent these other diseases. One study that just came out showed that people, they followed these pr professionals for 10 years, and they measured the vitamin D in their blood. Mm -hmm. And those who had low vitamin D had twice to three times the risk of having heart disease than those who had normal levels. And we have seen now that supplementing vitamin D has pr shown to slow down progression of plaque, uh, but there's no firm recommendation. But I believe if it's inexpensive, which it is, if it has no side effects, which it doesn't, and it's readily available, why not take this particular vitamin? Sure. And I think the usual recommendations now should be about 1,000 milligram or international units of vitamin D, any type, and maybe 2,000, and then get your levels measured. Uh, it's best to get a gel cap. Uh, it's better absorbed than the solid capsule like this, but any brand okay. would do. And uh, now I'm seeing, starting to put my patients more in vitamin D because it's almost a no-brainer. There's no downside to it, and there's a possible huge upside to it. And for those people who ha are sensitive to the sun, should they get outside maybe when the rays aren't too strong just to get a little light in the morning? Well, it's a double-edged sword because we know that exposure to skin uh, to sun causes skin cancer, premature aging of the skin. Uh, in northern climates, you're not exposed to the sun, so we think uh, they can't get it any other way. So I think it's worth taking the supplement if you're... Uh, have diabetes, if you have any type of heart disease, if you have problems with your blood pressure or cholesterol levels. Well, thank you very much. Another great tip and great recommendation. Thank you so much for joining us. We look forward to seeing you next time. I'm Dr. Larry Santora. I'm Heidi Cortese. And remember, your health matters. Be well.